Welcome to NKU Sports Break, everybody. I'm your host, Carly Motzer, joined by our baseball coach, Coach Aslan, this week. Coach, what's life look like now that we're all kind of separate in our worlds with quarantine? Uh, life as a baseball coach in quarantine is not fun. Uh, I got a really nice looking yard. Uh, the pool was clean. Um, the rooms are painted, so now I'm, I'm just ready to start playing some, you know, watching some baseball and that kind of stuff. But it's it, it is what it is, you know. We just try to make the most of it and just hope, uh, you know, keeping everybody safe and doing our thing with the mask. And other than that, just kind of waiting for for school to start and hopefully we get some back to some sort of uh, some uh, normalcy again. I think, and that's that's all we can ask for. What do you miss most about normalcy and having all of your players and even like what summer would look like? Yeah, well, um, I think what I miss most about is, is just the guys and, and, the, and the competing against other teams. I can't say I miss practice that much because that's kind of a grind sometimes. I'm sure the players uh, agree with that. But, you know, we miss, you know, playing our season. We, we miss hanging out and being on the bus. and. And, and, you know, the way we were trending, I thought we were starting to play pretty good. And, and so then, you know, the, the, the coronavirus got us and so shut us down. So uh, I really miss, miss the guys, miss my staff, and just the everyday being able to go and, and see people and be out and about, you know. And uh, I guess it makes you kind of look back and, and, and appreciate what we had. And if you don't appreciate what you had, then something's wrong with you because this is really a, a not, not very fun right now. And especially, you know, with. Uh, with the illness going on and the death going on and, and we all have family and older people in our family we worry about it and so um that part has been tough to handle but um just miss the guys and then those guys are kind of therapeutic for us and then and, and kind of keep us out and keep our mind off the real world playing, playing sports with everybody missing each other so much has anything got, been going on to kind of keep the team close while everyone is having to stay pretty distant well, we were doing uh, quite a few Zoom calls with the team, and then and, and, and each coach broke up to, to, to cover eight guys because we have so many. So we try and keep in touch with them, and and, and, and you know, but it's difficult with guys out playing some ball and working and things like that. We just kind of try and make some phone calls and stay social on social media and kind of keep updates. But uh, you know, I, I have 35 guys, so it's a little more, a little different for us to try and keep track of everybody. But we do the best we can and. And just uh, you know, just keep in touch and let them know what updates are going on, and just kind of keep pushing towards August seventeenth. All right, when August seventeenth rolls around, so I know that with last season being cut short and everything, we've got people graduating, people coming in. With this players dynamic, when August seventeenth rolls around, what's everybody looking like? What are we hoping for this year? Well, I, I think we're all hoping to be normal again, but I don't think that's going to happen, and so. Um, with that question, I don't think I have an answer to it. We don't know how it's going to look yet. You know, um, are we going to be able to practice with, with the whole team, with groups of ten, groups of five? So it could be some first makes some, some very long days from myself and the coaching staff being out there doing kind of individual lessons for the most part. Um, we're just going to wait and see what the NCAA rules, and when they do rule, we'll follow their their guidelines. But we're, we're definitely going to be you know, talking about the safety first and health first first and. Um, just trying to keep everybody safe, you know. We don't want to go back and then have to shut down again. You know, the season's got to be done. Everybody goes back to your back home or whatever. So we're going to do our part and you know, wearing our mask and social distance and just trying to keep it safe. It's all we can do at this point. I feel like every time they come up with a new safety, something else rolls out, and so we're all just rolling with the punches now. But hopefully, if everyone crosses all their T's and dots all their I's, we get our spring season. We get to watch you guys. It'll be a great time. But yeah, that would be in an ideal world now, wouldn't it? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. And I think our biggest challenge that I'm going to share with the team when we, we kind of get together is for those guys. To, to, to practice social distancing. It doesn't do us any good as adults and coaches that the guys are going out and, and, and not being being cognizant of the fact this is a dangerous situation and they gotta they gotta stay away, they gotta stay in their own bubble. And I know it's hard to ask college kids and college athletes to do, but that's how we gotta we gotta do it. You know, there's, there's really no choice. It's either going out or getting a season. So that's it, yeah, they gotta make that that's decision. The simplest forms. <laughs> that's that's it. It. I'm kidding. That's it. So we'll go to kind of a fun one, a little less NKU related. Who is your favorite MLB player of all time? Johnny Bench, no doubt about it. I was an ex catcher. I know that's kind of old school to say Johnny Bench, but that's that's my guy. I grew up watching him with the big red machine, and I was born and raised in Cincinnati, and, and 
Uh, Johnny Bench is my guy. And I always want to be a catcher. A hand. Uh, so that, that was an, that was, that's an easy question. So everybody knows who knows it's Johnny Bench. Oh, absolutely. Everyone says like, oh, it's old school or it's everyone says Johnny Bench. But I think we need to normalize liking people because they were good. Like it yeah, is yeah. to have a favorite that's a favorite. They're a favorite for a reason. Right. Yeah. But uh, just the way he played, he's just a natural. You know, I got to see his very last game as a Red and, you know, I was there for Johnny Bench night and all that stuff. So just uh, one of those things, little guys grew up wanting to be Johnny Bench. and. Uh, fell a little short of being Johnny Bench, but that's okay. Brandon Phillips was mine. I played softball growing up, and I was number four because I wanted to be Brandon Phillips, and I wanted golden gloves everywhere. And so mm -hmm. it is definitely, Cincinnati baseball is an exciting thing to grow up around, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Brandon Phillips is my son's favorite player. My son played college baseball. He grew up wearing number four. He loved Brandon Phillips. And he got to meet him at a Reds game once and got his autograph, and that was the highlight of his life. So. Uh, yeah, I can understand why he's one of the, the flashiest second base I've ever seen. So I hated to see when he was done playing, but he was fun. I know why you like him. Brandon Phillips getting traded was kind of like the first sports event that I was old enough to like care about why it happened one way or another. Like before it was like, woo, sports, but then people started getting traded and I was like, wait, that's my favorite. You mean he's not going to be there when we go to Red <laughs> anymore? And oh yeah, it was heartbreaking for this city for sure. For sure, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we've talked about life on the field, off the field, that kind of good stuff. Are there any just overall life lessons that you wish either that you've learned or that you could tell your players, both like just on and off the field with Corona being such an unprecedented circumstance, we're learning a lot every single day. Yeah, I, I think we touched on it when we first started talking about having a different appreciation for life. And, you know, uh, we all live and die with athletics, baseball, you know, everyone wants to get four hits in a game, but it's just not a, it's not that important when you see a virus take over the, the world and um, affects everything and you lose close ones. And so I just hope our guys understand the meaning of, uh, of what it's like to, to, to lose something, but to understand it seems bigger than what we're doing. And um, it's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been, tough, been a really good life lesson for me, but I really try to sit back and, and appreciate what I have. Um, it's really easy to look at stuff you don't have and woe is me and this is sick. We don't get our player a season, but man, you got to put things in perspective. People are dying, people are sick and we're losing loved ones. And so um, I just try and, you know, look at things like how lucky I am. I just try and look at how lucky I am and how lucky we are. and. Um, just and it's just something you got to get through, you know, it's something you got to get through. And that we like losing our season, absolutely not. But at the same time, our guys are healthy, haven't had any deaths within our, our, our baseball family. Um, some sickness, you know, people had some, got some, some of the, the, the virus, and but we've all got through it. But just appreciate what you have and then live every day to the fullest, which probably sounds, you know, a lot of rhetoric, but that's what it is. You got to enjoy what you have and, and look at what you do have, not what you don't. I like that. I like that a lot. I have two people in my family with no issues and it has definitely been just like things that I used to do every single day that I didn't even think about are things that I'm now like, oh gosh, that could put X, Y, and Z in danger. Like, no, we need to completely reevaluate our way of living. And I think if we start by appreciating it to begin with, that's a really, really good place to start. Yeah, and, you know, my dad's 92 and uh, lost my mom two years ago, and so he's alone, and, and so I guess we got shut down right around St. Patrick's Day. So when it first came out, we were really uncertain about what to do, so I didn't get to go see him for two months because I, I don't want to be the one going over there and, and you know, giving him the, any germs or whatever. And so after a while, he said, hey, we, I, we just got to get back. I need people to come over. So we got back, and got back to see my dad a little bit more, but being careful about it. But, you know, that's, that's tough, you know, somebody's 92, and... You, you can't go see them and, and then you see people in the um, the nursing homes I and mean, you can't take any visitors or the hospital you drop people off you can't go in to help them into the hospital and it's just it's just really frustrating you just gotta gotta get over it so appreciate what we had and hopefully if we do everything the right way with masking and social distancing maybe we get back to that and that's what, what i'm really trying to at least take care of my house and our, our team do things the right way if everybody that does it that way a little bit at a time it will affect everybody the right way so hopefully we can get that done all right, well, we'll end on a bit of a warm and fuzzy. I asked Coach Gleason this last week, too, but what is your absolute all-time favorite NKU baseball memory? 
my all-time favorite baseball memory, probably when I got the job 20 years ago. You know, I, I took over for my old coach. I, I'm the second coach in NKU history, and Coach Aker uh, with, you know, preceded me. I played for him, coached for him. And I just think that to get to go back to your your um, alma mater and where you played and have a bunch of friends and got to be the head coach there. And, and that was that's really kind of started my whole, my whole career. And I was at Thomas More for six years. I to take over the NKU job the very first day, walking in the coach's office, and that was my office. Um, that's that's you know, just left an indelible mark on my, on my heart, my brain, and my, and my soul because it's uh, been a big part of my life. And, you know, I'm 59 years old, and I you know, played the NKU coach there, and I've been there for 20 years. So half my life has been at NKU. So the first day I took over is by far the, the best. A lot of big wins, you know, we had won a lot of championships. Um, made a lot of close friends and, and, and things like that. And uh, but um, just taking over that program from such a great human being as Coach Jake was is you know, my, my favorite thought. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Well, Coach, thank you for coming on the sports break today. Everyone, give NKU baseball a follow on social media. NKU Norse uh, follow on social media for more coaches' interviews and more content this summer.